Welcome to Modern Aikidoist Podcast. My sincere thanks to listeners and those who have liked, subscribed, and commented. Your interest is noticed and deeply appreciated. In today's podcast, I'm going to take a look at why students tend to stop attending classes once they are promoted to the rank of Shodan. Shodan is the first degree black belt. I've also seen the same effect in organizations which bestow Hakama on brown belt rank students. I think there are a few reasons for this which can be addressed by both instructors and the culture they create in their dojos as well as the students themselves. Starting with the most basic and obvious is that the rank is perceived as a goal. The black belt is often considered like a graduation certificate and those who hold it are experts. Kind of like graduating high school. Once you have your diploma, you would never consider going back to high school to stay current or expand your knowledge. Shodan is an important milestone in your martial arts path for sure, but it's not the final goal. Getting your black belt merely means that you are familiar enough with the basics to start really honing your skills and becoming superb at your art. It's also where training is the most fun. Your ukemi is good enough that you can get thrown with vigor so you can explore higher intensity training safely. Your body should be pretty well conditioned from a few years of practice to handle impact if your ukemi is not perfect. Imagine someone going through all the effort of learning to play the guitar or piano, spending hours and hours of time over the span of several years, and then when they get good enough to start playing with other musicians or performing live, they set down their instrument and don't take up music again. It's like they suffered the tedious part without indulging in the enjoyable part, which is having the skill and using it. Instructors can unconsciously foster this perception of the value of the black belt because of how much respect they give it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with respect, but sometimes so much respect is shown to black belts and instructors that students fall into the trap of merely pursuing the belt for its own sake. Humans are pretty easily distracted that way. You can see it when prospective students come in, and one of the first questions they have is, how long does it take to get a black belt? If only I had a dollar for every time I was asked that question, I could retire. While those who have gone the distance and earned their showdown are deserving of respect, be careful not to give it so much reverence that students get distracted by it. Students follow the instructor's example. Show respect, but always make sure your students understand that it's someone's skills, not their belt, which is important. If you're clear about this, they will understand it. You can have belt ranks and tests in your dojo without letting the pursuit of them get out of control. If you don't, students will often quit once they reach showdown. A very common reason for students to quit is that they feel that they are good enough and are satisfied with their level of skill. Each person decides for themselves what they're looking for and whether they have already achieved it. It pays to remember that martial arts skills are perishable, which means they require practice to remain proficient in. Even professional musicians practice regularly. There's a very common perception that the next step after earning your black belt is to become an instructor. This perception makes sense due to the fact that it's a logical progression. When you are experienced, you are expected to pass along what you have learned. Many schools make black belts start teaching classes. Some practitioners just have no interest in teaching and find the burden of having to lead a class to be distasteful. If students in your dojo believe that they will be expected to teach classes once they have achieved Shodan rank and they really don't want to teach, they will be tempted to quit. It's not that they might be upset over it, but being pressured into doing something they really have no interest in serves only to drive people away. They might merely be avoiding being seen as a disappointment to the instructor or the dojo. I believe it is far better to make sure students understand that teaching is neither required nor expected. If you would like them to teach, invite them to do so, but never pressure them into it. I've noticed that instructors often set up students to want to quit shortly after their showdown tests in other ways too. One is a level of attentiveness that they experience from the beginning. Usually with new students, they require an above average level of attention and guidance. From a student's standpoint, this is a great experience. Having someone actively helping you is productive and nourishing. As a student advances into the intermediate ranks and they start performing better, the attention of the instructor tends to fade somewhat. Intermediate students don't need as much correction as new students do. The exception is preparing for a rank exam, where instructors and seniors tend to work intensively with the testee to get them ready. With the exception of the nervousness, which is a natural part of test prep, students really enjoy the increased attention to their skills and improvement. Then the test happens and that attention drops off quickly. The relief of the nervousness being gone is a welcome change, but the drop off in the instructor's guidance tends to make the experience bittersweet. 
On a showdown test, the effect is at its peak. Instructors usually take preparing their students for showdown very seriously and spend a lot of time with their students to make sure that they are ready. Then the test happens and is over and the attention suddenly stops. Add to that the feeling that crosses the new showdown's mind about the black belt being the final goal and many are left with the question, what now? I've seen this hit students very hard, which made me take great care to adjust how I taught to avoid setting up students this way. The main way I approach it is to make clear that every test is merely a milestone. There is no final goal of martial arts training. You are constantly improving yourself. If you stop training, so will your improvements. The belt really doesn't mean as much as honing your skills, keeping them sharp, and keeping your body moving and strong. Training does all these. A dusty black belt does not. Another thing I instill in my students is a sense of responsibility for their own development to a certain degree. When they start, their training and skills are entirely in the hands of the instructor. As they grow, though, they must learn to take stock of their strengths and weaknesses and take an active role in working on them. Typical martial arts training doesn't work the same way it does for, say, a boxer and his coach. A boxer is carefully guided through every nuance of his training from beginning to end. For this approach to work in a dojo, an instructor could only have a few students at a time. This approach also tends to make the student fully reliant and dependent on the instructor permanently. I view this approach as teaching a man how to fish instead of merely giving him a fish every day. If you teach him how to fish, he will not be reliant on you forever. A superb martial artist is able to analyze, think, adapt, and learn without needing somebody else to do that for him. This is a skill a good instructor will impart on their students. It doesn't mean the instructor will be useless once the students get to be a high enough level. Wise guidance and advice will always help others, and that is what a good instructor should provide. A student must always be open to advice and put it to the test themselves before deciding to accept or reject it. Sometimes even the best of advice might not work for the student as it does for the instructor. If the student never learns to discern for himself, he could be doing things which don't work very well just because his instructor told him to. You can start introducing the concept of students choosing which techniques they favor over others fairly easily, even within the first year of their training. I find that around Sankyu, or three ranks short of black belt, students start showing first signs of managing more of the fine points of their training. That is, they tend to spot consistent issues with their execution that they feel need to be focused on. These can be things like taking too wide a stance, pivoting on the heels, losing balance and turning, not having coordinated breathing with their movement, too much grip switching, and many others. By that level of experience, they are not merely focused on remembering which technique is which or how to do the technique, but the finer points which make the techniques succeed or fail. A good instructor should encourage them to examine themselves for where they need work. As they move from beginner to intermediate, show them how the process works by watching them and describing what you see. Do it in a way that you show them the analysis and planning for how to solve the issue. They will learn by your example. Telling them what to correct is merely handing them a fish. Instead, show them how to fish. If you want a measure of real skill, it is not the ability to do every movement or technique perfectly. The real skill is to spot what you're doing wrong and correcting it next time. It is the skill of learning. The adaptable warrior is the most formidable, learning to study, analyze, and adapt. If you can do this quickly, you're an excellent student and will become a superb martial artist. Going through the motions someone tells you to will only make you a mediocre martial artist at best. From a music perspective, it's one thing to be able to play the notes. It's another thing to be able to make the music. If you learn this process, getting another rank will mean little to you, and you will not be tempted to quit training just because you received a new accolade. The process is fun because you can see yourself improve through not only your instructor's input, but your own analysis and adjustments. A final thought. If you want to be better tomorrow than you are today, then get in the dojo and train. It's just that simple. Ambition and drive to be better is not something that your instructor can give you. They can only help steer you. You must provide the forward energy. What other topics are you interested in hearing covered in this podcast? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. You can also go to the Facebook group Aikido the Marshall side and post a comment. Your input and engagement helps podcasts like these stay around. Please support it by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Enjoy your training.